If you have not yet accepted Christ as your Savior, your chains are heavy, weighing you down. You just you feel so heavy. And day after day, year after year, they just get heavier. Let it go. Give it to God and receive His gift of salvation. Thank you. 
Hey everybody, e Randy here. I had some friends ask me, hey, what does it feel like whenever you totally surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ? And the Bible says that His Spirit testifies to our spirit that we're His. Whenever He comes to live inside of you, you know it. You see, I was an alcoholic and I banged cocaine and so I was addicted. And I basically told the devil, hey, if this is evil, I want more of it. And if you tell the devil that, that you want more of it, you'll get it. And you see, I lost everything. One night I was getting ready to rob Billy's drugstore and I was going to kill whoever got in my way. And the Lord Jesus Christ intervened, the Holy Spirit intervened and said, Randy, I know that you're going down to Billy's drugstore to rob the drugstore and kill whoever gets in your way, but it won't be you killing anyone tonight. It'll be you dying tonight. And where will you go? I knew I would go to hell. So that spooked me. The reason why that spooked me is because I hadn't told anyone. I hadn't written it down. I hadn't called anybody. I just thought of it 10 minutes ago. And I've got the gun in hand getting ready to walk out. And it spooked me so bad. And I knew it only could be God that knew that my mind. And so... I dropped down to my knees. I didn't want to go to hell. I was afraid that that night I would be in hell because he said so and I believed it. I dropped down to my knees and I immediately asked Jesus to forgive me. And I knew immediately that I was forgiven and the drugs and the alcohol was released from me. I knew that I was free, free. And I just started worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the night that I met him, that's the highlight of my life. It's more important than my birth. I wish I was never born if, if I couldn't know Jesus Christ. That is the highlight of my life. So maybe the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you to use your talents, to use your voice, to use your testimony, how he changed you from the inside out. Because whenever he comes to live inside of you, You'll know it. You'll know that the God of the universe has changed you for the better. And so I'm asking you right now to say these words, the hardest three words in the whole human language. I am sorry. I am sorry. Just tell the Lord Jesus Christ that you're sorry that you've sinned against him. I hope, I hope this helps you come to know him so you might have eternal life too. Hey, I love you guys. Take care. We'll see you the next time.
Hello everyone, I'm Tamara Chaos. Welcome to the Chains Will Be Gone event. We are going to talk about Noah and the Flood. Such an interesting story, isn't it? Genesis 6, 7, and 8 talk about Noah and the Flood. God was getting really fed up with how wicked the world was getting, and He decided to start fresh. Just wipe it all out and start fresh. But He wanted to save Noah and his family because they were remaining faithful to God so he had Noah build a big boat that would be secure enough to hold against the raging waters. The ark was built in 120 years and was as long as one and a half football fields and as tall as a five-story building. They stayed on the boat for one year and they were finally able to leave the boat when Noah was 601 years old. A dove came and let him know that dry land had appeared and that it was safe to come out. God can do this for you. Sadie, in her original song called Home Now, says that when you need to numb the pain, take a knee and pray. Your past is full of hurts, trials, and mistakes, but God can wipe that all out with a spiritual flood. We can grow from our past. We can use these bricks to build instead of carrying them around. Don't let them wear you down. Learn from your past and move on. Just like Noah and his family had to spend a year on the boat, we have had to spend a year in quarantine. They could not leave the boat because they were surrounded by water and had to remain quarantined on the ark. We are surrounded by the coronavirus and pretty much have to be quarantined to our arcs, aka houses. But in our case, as long as places are open, we wear a mask and social distance, we can actually leave our arcs. We are in a COVID flood. Noah's family went through a great deal together and they probably had their squabbles but they probably bonded as well. Some of us have more people on our arcs and thus probably have more squabbles than others. This should be a time of bonding. We should be checking in on our brothers and sisters who are stuck on their arc and we should come out of this bonded, not divided. Thank you. Hello, Jeff Myers here, going to play for the Chains Will Be Gone event, and uh, I thank you for inviting me to play for this. I uh, kind of enjoyed working this song up for you. Um, we're talking about chains and breaking chains and many things and many ways to do that. Uh, meditation, prayer, um, even sailing, where you can do meditation and prayer while you're sailing. So this is a song called Sail Away. And uh, I'm going to play this for you. Hope you like it. I'm going to get my band started, and I'll be right back. I'll be searching for Jumping faces 
just hit the moon Another boat in the distance All else is open sea When whisked away all my worries And it centered me Left the stairs and me Sail away Thank you.
thank you. Sell away, everyone. Get away and break the chains. Hi, how are you doing today? My name is Mike Moore. It's such a privilege to come to be able to speak to you guys today. I was so grateful when Elizabeth invited me to do this. She's an amazing woman of God that's doing all kinds of stuff in the media world. And I totally appreciate that because I'm that's that's my heart too. It's to change people's lives through the power of media. But today, let's get right into it. I want to talk to you about the days of Noah and see if we're in something similar like that. You know, in the days of Noah, God, just think about this, God created all mankind to just be like this beautiful people and then they sinned against them. The devil came in, deceived them, destroyed them, pulled them down. Next thing you know, from Genesis 1 to Genesis 6, now God looks down and the people's minds are evil continually. Can you imagine that? People's minds that God made, they've been so deceived by Satan that their minds are evil continually. So God said, I repent, I repent that I made man. I'm sorry that I made man. And I'm going to blot him out of the face of the earth. But then he looked and he saw Noah. And it said, but Noah found grace in the sight of God. Now Noah, he was, he was I know the King James might say, he was, he was perfect in his generations. He wasn't a perfect man. He was just a man that had not corrupted himself with all the wicked evil that was going on around him. So God told him, you're going to build this boat and you're going to put your family on there. And then the animals, you're going to put the animals on there too. So he built this ark. I think it was for 120 years. He built this ark and people probably walked by and ridiculed and mocked and you know, we're saying, yeah, yeah, where, where's your God and all this. But then it came a day where all the animals came on, he got on, and God shut the door of the ark. And it began to rain. It began to rise and rise and rise. And you know, I've heard people talk about this in the past. It's not in the Bible, but commentaries and people have surmised that when, when the door shut, when it started raining like crazy, because it never rained like that before, that people came and they started beating on the door and were like, maybe let me and my family on, let me and my little girl, my, my little boy, let us on. And they even said they, they found a piece of, that they thought was like the art door or something. This is like on some history channel, but they found the art door and they see where people's hands had like scraped trying to get in. We don't know if this is true or not, but just think about this. If it's, it's possibility, this is frightful that they're in there, Noah and his family in safety. And then these people are, going, save us, let us in there. Some people are probably saying, God, save us. And other people are probably cursing God as they, they go down in the murky water and the boat lifts up. Okay, so you know, whatever happened, we know that Noah and his family knew that the whole world had been destroyed besides them. And that was probably a psychological effect to them in a psychological way. So here they are out there quarantined, if you will, from the, from the evil that's being destroyed. Here they are out on the ocean. There came a point where all they could see, if they could even open the door, I'm not really sure if they could, but if they could open a, a window and look out, all they could see would just be ocean. You know, it'd just be kind of like being on a boat and just look around and just all ocean, nothing else. But there they are on the ark, and I'm sure there was times where they were so thankful Oh, thank God that he saved us. And other times, I'm sure that their kids, you know, knew people. And, and Noah and his wife, you know, they knew people. And they probably remember people had been wiped out. So anyway, this was a, a, a difficult time for them, I'm sure. Even though it was a, it was a great time, a blessing being saved. But I'm sure it was a difficult time just remembering. Because, you know, I have a real strong memory. Not, sometimes I remember things that are not so great that happened to me. And it can, you know, trouble me sometimes. So we have to, you know, think correctly. And we have to think on the scripture. But maybe you find yourself in that time now. That 2020 has just been like a crazy year. I mean, everything's going great. The stock market's at its highest level. And then all of a sudden, COVID comes down. Like the whole world is shut down. 
and people they're beginning to question like they're some doctors are saying it's true other doctors are saying you know it's, it's not true you know some people say masks work other people say the masks don't work and people go on social media and and people that are talking about certain issues you know they're getting banned and facebook and twitter they're banning people so people don't trust people it, it's they don't know who to trust and then now we have this election and people they feel like there's been major fraud and we don't we don't know what how that's going to become you know we don't know what's going to become of that but as a result people that used to love one major news station they're like totally turned against it because they think they lied to them so this is a crazy time so we we ask ourselves who can we trust we can't we can't put our trust in a president no man or woman that would be ever president would be they're just a man or a woman so we must put our trust in Jesus Christ. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you may find yourself struggling right now. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you have friends that lost a job. Maybe, God forbid, maybe you know people that, that have committed suicide or somebody in your family has committed suicide because of everything going on. You have to put your trust in the Lord. We have no idea how this is gonna come together. We know that God is on our side. We know that he is for us. We know that he has prepared a place for us. But let me give you something somebody told me one time. They said, if you're ever depressed, and you don't know what to do, they said, go out and find somebody and in the name of the Lord, help them. And then if you're still depressed, repeat that until it goes away. And if you ever notice when you go out and you try to help somebody in the name of the Lord, but you're evangelizing or whatever you're doing, you're building somebody's house for them. I went to California one time and we all as a group, me and this youth group, we went around, we cleaned up the streets and we went and we ministered to the homeless. And the last thing I was thinking about was myself. I was, I was so, it was so great to be helping these other people. So why don't you get some, this would be a good idea. I'm just thinking of this on the spot. You can get some really cool tracks that are like illustrative gospel tracks. And when you go out and you see people say, you know, these are crazy times, aren't they? And they might go, yeah, and be like, I want you to read this. I think this will give you some hope and some peace. That's what I want to leave you with. Hope and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, look, it's been an honor speaking to you guys. You guys are amazing. I pray the rest of this conference just be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have a great day.
change.